Hey guys, welcome to the ranch. This is my weekly garden update for June 24th. And uh, I'm sounding like a broken record here, but it is hot and uh, we're getting through it. I know a lot of you are following along uh, because you've already read and uh, know about the mitt lighter method that I'm using. And um, for those of you that haven't read that book or know the, the process here, um, I just want to go over today on some of the pros and cons that I've learned uh, being a first time gardener and using this method and uh, what I like about it and what I uh, didn't care for. So we'll take a walk through the garden, show you where we're at and uh, give you my comments and feedback. We'll start here as we always do, and this is now the sweet potato bed. I'm really excited about having a crop that's going to grow and produce in this heat. And I tell you, these things have sprouted up, and uh, they look they look vibrant. I can't wait to see all of the vines that come out of this uh, bed and uh, all the sweet potatoes we get out of it. So sweet potatoes are uh, doing well. These are Beauregard variety, um, Steel City Plant Company is where I got them from. I got the slips there and uh, so far so good. They're looking strong and healthy. Banana peppers. So um, yeah, I'm a dummy. I did some research and uh, I found out my Lola banana peppers are supposed to turn orange and red. That's the the ripeness. I, I thought all banana papers just stayed yellow or light, light green, but this variety, the Lola banana papers, they are supposed to turn uh, orange and and uh, and red the more they ripen. So that's what they're doing. And um, I found they change flavors quite a bit when they get the those different colors, and uh, I like it. It's a good good flavor. So. I'm still getting lots of peppers and I'm starting to freeze some and uh, giving them away and uh, really enjoying the banana peppers. They're doing well. One of the pros that I do like about this mitt lighter method is the size of the grow beds or the boxes. These boxes are very easy to keep weeded, um, very easy to water because it's um, contained in this bed you can see the sides I've just uh, let the irrigation run for about five minutes and it's and it saturates this this grow box pretty well I don't think it uses a whole lot of water still haven't got a high water bill so I'm curious about that but the the pros I like about the the box easy to keep cleaned with weeds and easy to water down here we've got our uh, bell peppers and these are turning they're not a bright red but they are a kind of a brownish red and i believe that's natural and the way that what they're supposed to be doing we've get, we've got several nice green bell peppers i haven't tried one of the red ones yet but they're uh, the green ones have been very tasty and we're enjoying those lots of them lots of jalapenos um I've been picking these pretty much every one, about once a week, getting the harvest of jalapenos. We got lots of them stored up. Pretty happy with them. Now down here we've got our determinate red snapper tomatoes. Now they haven't grown height-wise in a while, but they're still producing fruit. This one right here just might be a contender for my uh my big boy i've got one so far that was one pound and that one's looking like it might be close to that so i'm letting it stay there for a day or two but they're still producing you know the plants aren't looking that great and that healthy anymore but uh, they are still alive and still producing tomatoes so pretty happy with it Okay, our indeterminates, our mortgage lifters, they're still uh, producing as well. Um, I come in and prune and harvest pretty much every day. Uh, still using the trellis. They're still climbing somewhat. Um, don't know for sure if I'll get any more 
uh, up here on this top. See, there's flowers up here, but I don't know if they're actually putting off fruit. But what's already fruited are uh, still still producing. So pretty happy with those. Now the cherry tomatoes they're looking pretty rough um, their production's way down at at the peak i was getting about three pounds a day almost on these things and now i'm getting not even a pound but there's still lots of tomatoes on the on some of the plants so one of the things about this mitt lighter method here um, this this grow box in particular with the uh, tea frames is I, I really like the system where you can train the plants up the the twine and uh, secure it at the bottom here and keep your bed uh, nice and clean of weeds and then be able to water from below the, the leaves. I like all that. Um, you can also pack a lot of plants in a small area and that's one of the benefits of this method is you can you can uh, put a lot of plants in an area and train them you know up the, the trellis system here so I do like that one thing I don't like and it was my fault is I put them I think a little too close together um, I believe the book called for nine inches apart and these you can see I, I had a loss here but you can see they're about probably 12 inches apart and I, I think I could have uh, 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 spaced them out a little bit more probably next time I do this I will give everything a little bit more uh, room to breathe here moving to the uh, the melon patch so watermelons in this in this bed are not looking that great they're still got some flowers but the leaves are turning um, I've already harvested one melon that was really really sweet and delicious um, the other two that I have here are I think they've quit growing but they are um, they are ripe they're getting more ripe i guess because i tried the one that i uh, picked and it was sweet and uh, i was pr pretty happy with it now the cantaloupes i've had some issues as you can see here this one just split on me yesterday um, i've gotten two uh, ripe melons off of here and that one right there you saw i just barely pulled the the vine and it and it um, it came off and this is starting to change colors it does smell a little musky so I think this one is ripe um, I'll take that in today and that one I think is also oh yeah I see the, the vine just broke so there's two more so I've got this is this will be the fourth melon that I've got off the uh, cantaloupe vine but you can tell the the leaves I don't know if it was the powdery mildew I I, I think I eradicated the mildew with the uh, with the organic spray but the leaves just didn't ever come back I mean um, they turned dark and died and uh, you know but they're still still growing here so I got what, three or four more cantaloupes birdhouse gourds now these things are they look atrocious but they're still uh, still green I I don't have the um, exact day um, that I planted these I think it was uh, February 15th when I put the seeds in the starting tray and these have a hundred and ten day life maturity date so I mean we're at about four months right now so they're still still uh, uh, stems are still green so um, just letting them hang here and I'm looking forward to doing some drying and doing some uh, birdhouses with these that's exciting to me now <clears throat> pumpkins looking really bad I lost uh, well I picked one of the pumpkins this plant completely died that one over there is still still uh, growing still okay uh, this one I picked I fed these to the cows the cows didn't like the pumpkin so I think next time I'll uh, do something else with these two here but you can see the pumpkins not looking too well same thing with the uh, butternut squash this is the last one on the vine and it's uh, it's probably about ready to pick um, still got flowers up here 
kind of crazy because that looks completely dead right there. So I, I really don't know what happened to the butternut squash. It was just a, a weak plant, a, a few plants here, and they never, never really uh, produced a lot. Cucumbers, uh, now cucumbers are still just putting off massive amounts of fruit even though they look pretty bad down below um, they are producing fruit still getting cucumbers every day and I did have some of the powdery mildew on these plants as well and uh, some insects I'm sure but you know I don't know if I'll ever have perfectly healthy plants here in uh, this part of Texas it's uh, just hot bugs are bad and uh, and uh, I did what I could without putting harsh chemicals on them and you know this is what we got still getting fruit so can't be upset about that there's the cherry tomatoes still getting plenty of tomatoes more than I can eat okay moving on okay an update on the blackberry patch so as you can see we've got you know lots of growth not all the plants are producing like i would like like this little guy they all started out about this size with one just one little cutting this one's putting off some extras from the roots but it's not it's not growing canes like i would like but most of them are are uh, putting off a lot of canes and uh, I've done the uh, trellising and the trimming and that's what I'm going to be doing now is coming back and when these laterals uh, I'll put a link here to my pruning video so this one is a prime example of what I'm trying to do is every major main cane I, once I pruned the top there I wanted it to put off these laterals, which it did. This one has lots of laterals. Now when the laterals get about, you know, 15, 20 inches, I'm gonna prune the tip of these, which they're getting close right now. So like this one, just tip it. And hopefully this lateral will put off more laterals and uh, we'll have lots of berries next year. So that's the, the plan so far. It's kind of working out. So there's a lateral. Let's make sure. Yeah, there's a lateral. So I'm going to tip that. Okay, here we are at the experimental potato corn melon patch. And um, this thing is pretty much in the shade. Um, as you can see, it gets morning sun. This big um, pecan tree here keeps it shaded midday and then it gets some evening sun from behind me here. Um, but even with all the shade, most of these plants are doing real well. Uh, keep it watered, overhead water with that little tripod sprinkler there. And uh, twice a day it's getting about 20 minutes of water. and. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I, I I didn't do well with potatoes, but the melons seem to be seem to be growing fine. And uh, I've seen several good-sized watermelons in there. So now the corn, I'm just pulling that out and feeding it to the cows. Um, okra, I'm getting quite a bit of production off of it now. Every day, I'll get a handful of the fruit off the okra. You can see, and I'm pleased to announce we do have a eggplant. Look at that. I think there's a couple of eggplant, but look at these leaves, man. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Grasshoppers, insects of some kind, I don't know, but something is decimating these leaves. I don't know what it is. Another eggplant, another eggplant, another one. So, pretty happy with the eggplant. There's a watermelon. 
there's a uh, I don't know what variety this is I believe it's just a uh, the pollinizer variety for the some of the seedless watermelons that are in there so we've got it looks like three different variety of watermelons in here and a cantaloupe plant <laughs> mixed in but um, I've counted one two three four five six seven different uh, watermelons in here and I'm really kind of a there's one there's one I'm really kind of leery to uh, walk around in here with the uh, without my uh, snake boots because I don't know what kind of critters are underneath all these vines. I mean, it's nice and cool and wet, so I'm assuming it's a prime location for snakes. So I kind of uh, beat it around with the PVC pipe before I start sticking my hands in here normally. But there's a uh, another variety of melon. And uh, there we are. So I know it looks overgrown, but I'm just kind of letting it go do its thing so that's the uh, watermelon patch previously known as potato patch and here we are at the goji berries I've uh, given away a few of my plants uh, my neighbors were checking out my garden and uh, showed interest in the goji berries she said she had been uh, looking at them and I uh, gave her some so that was uh, the whole purpose here is to share and and uh, help each other out so these things um, you can see they're they're doing all right I'm gonna transplant them later on in the in the fall and hopefully we'll have a self-sustaining goji berry production here on the on the ranch and the strawberry tower um, lots of green lots of green not many berries it is still doing some berries here but uh, mostly just trying to get the, the root root system strong and the greens uh, for the rest of the year so we can overwinter it all right guys that's going to do it for the uh, garden update for june 24th now like i said in the beginning all the people that are following this because of the mitt ladder method thank you um i'm going to keep doing the method i don't um have any real complaints i mean i'm a new green gardener i have no idea what i was doing or had no idea i'm learning a lot and i know there's uh you know pros and cons to this every system you use and here in texas with my my soil my heat um all the uh the uh, things going against you and, and trying to grow a garden insects um i'm pretty happy with it uh, my challenges were the the pest and 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 disease i don't know if it's the powdery mildew um, that wiped out the uh the squash and the pumpkins and somewhat of the cucumbers that but the but the uh, heat the pest and the disease uh, really kind of overwhelmed that side of the garden i kept everything else going um, and pretty happy with the results i mean we got an abundance of, of food that i i wouldn't have had if i hadn't tried this so pretty happy with it overall uh, lots of lessons learned about spacing and and varieties of, of vegetables that i like to grow so we're just going to keep keep uh, learning and keep uh, building on our our successes and uh, and keep learning from our failures so thanks for watching um subscribe like do all that stuff because i'm going to keep it going as long as i'm motivated as long as you guys are watching and and uh, commenting i'm uh, i'm going to keep doing videos and hopefully you get something out of it so thanks for watching <laughs>